Hey everybody, how you doing? All right, give everybody time to come in tonight. How you doing, Carrie Pope? Hope you're doing well. So as you come on, say good afternoon to me. I hope God is blessing you. Hope you're having a great Thursday. And uh, today's day three. I'm doing a 30-day challenge for um, uh, topics. And today's topic is a really good one. It's titled, You're Learning from Broken People. So as you come on, say hello to me. I would love to see who's on with me today. I want to make sure that the broadcast is coming through clearly. I got some great information I want to share with you. Um, just really have got some great feedback from the uh, two videos I've done already this week, one on Will Smith and one on Kanye West. And um, this video today is prompted by um, just watching some of the responses on social media and people that they esteem as their heroes and people that are looking for help, but are learning from broken people. And um, I'm going to bring some information in from a Dr. Joy Leary. She's a powerful, powerful vessel. And so um, I'm excited. So listen, come on in real quick. All right. I can see some of you. So, hey, Carl, how you doing? Different ones. Let me get my my camera right here. Let me get let me get my my thing right so I can see everybody. Deborah. Hello, everybody. And so uh, Dr. Joy Leary, she wrote a theory on PTSD. Now, you know, post-traumatic stress syndrome is something that a lot of people suffer from. Um, I've suffered from it in my life and going to talk a little bit about it tonight. But what's unique about her uh, insight on it is it's not PTSD from the perspective of post-traumatic syndrome, a stress syndrome, excuse me. It's post-traumatic slave, right? Post-traumatic slave. And it's talking about, you know, that that defect uh, deficiency that we have in life and going through it so let's give a few minutes for the audience to build i'm going to get up here real quickly some notes and i want to talk to you guys about it because i think it's really going to bless you um and i want to get your insight because as i began to look at this and really uh really do some insight we're not focusing on slavery tonight so please don't think that's it it's not going to be even close to that it's going to be something different so uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or post-traumatic slave disorder is what some people uh, she's called it. And that was interesting. So I want to share it with you. Um, and what's unique about this is a lot of trauma. OK, post-traumatic stress disorder comes from trauma. It comes from um, a traumatic experience that has happened in one's life. And people try to go on without doing any type of therapy. OK, and so I want you to listen to what she's going to say tonight. This is pretty interesting. Um, uh, Dr. Joy Leary, and I'm going to put the full video up on my on my feed later on. Uh, it's about an hour and so. But she is a, a professor um, deep and I say she's deep. She's deep. And um, I'm just going to share two clips with you tonight. We're going to talk about it. And I want your feedback. Hey, David, how you doing? And invite as many people to come in and join us because this is something tonight. Uh, this PTSD, a lot of people are suffering from it and will not get therapy because you're thinking PTSD deals with war, right? No, post-traumatic means after you experienced a trauma, okay? After you have experienced post means after the fact. So post-traumatic stress disorder, it is something that a person is trying to, to operate from. The word itself lets us know there's been a traumatic situation, but can I be honest with you? As a as an African American man, um, we are inheritance of PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, and I want to share with you tonight why that is. So, hey, God bless you, Doctor Carl. How you doing, my apostle? Good to see you as well, and you as well, all you guys. So, if you will, let's get into this. I'm gonna share this video real quick, and I'll be back to tell you uh, deep in this. Uh, really get into what she's saying, and I want your feedback tonight. I want you to talk with me. I want you to share with me what you think, because when I, um, you know, when God put on my heart to do this 30 day broadcast, it is to pull back the veil and to share some of the struggles as a black man I've gone through. People think because you are a, a leader or a celebrity or an apostle, whatever it may be, that life has always been perfect. 
No, we learn from the stresses of life and we also learn from the experiences of life. So you're learning from broken people. And one of the things that Rebecca and I stress so much is healing, getting healed, doing the work. The courses we write come from personal experiences. I just had a session, a, a conversation from a young lady and um, just found me out the blue. You're looking for one other thing and found me. And as she was talking with me, I began to share with her. I said, you know, I don't normally talk to people like this. This is what I do for sessions. I don't just answer the phone call and start, you know, dialoguing with someone about their situations. But God had led me to speak with this young lady. And I shared with her that um, a lot of our learned behavior came through social. Uh, the word that, that, that they use was social learning. Oh, the social learning therapy, a uh, ther uh, theory, social learning theory basically deals with you learn from the social environment that you're in. You learn what your beliefs are. You learn how to carry yourself. You learn, uh, you react a certain way, right? Because of the social, catch that now, the social learning theory. So how does that apply to me as a man and as a person who develops some of the beliefs I have or some of the experiences? Well, let's go into Dr. Leary real quick. And then I'll come back to you and we're going to hear what she has to say. So here we go. Based on what I know about sugar plantations, tobacco and the Caribbean, what I know about American chattel slavery and the plantations there, does anyone right now ever recall mental health assistance to slaves? Anybody remember sending in the therapist after I sold off your son, daughter, raped folks any, in, at any point? Never. Second question. After slavery was officially over, now you're free. Anybody any remember, remember any therapy then? We know it's been rough. It's been deep for you. It's been difficult. We're going to do a little group therapy. Anybody remember that? That would be no. Number three, after slavery officially ended, both in the States, in the Caribbean, the British ended, do you remember whether or not trauma continued? Did the trauma continue for people of African descent? I need to know. Okay, so now let's do the math. Hundreds of years of trauma, no treatment. Freed, more trauma, no treatment. What do you do the math? Do you think there may be residual impacts of that trauma? Of course there is. It didn't end, friends, and it hasn't ended yet. Did you hear that? That right there is deep. She asked a question. <laughs> she said, did you learn from your then when i when, when when the slave was sold did they have therapy to help them deal with the traumatic experience no when somebody was seeing somebody hanging from uh, um you, let's say back in the 60s when it was lynching and you see people hanging or racism the way it was and black people you know going through ptsd post-traumatic stress disorder being traumatized and afraid to speak themselves afraid to look at a person Here's a good example. Many people ever pay attention to when you walk on the street and if you're walking and, and I, I showed this to my wife. And again, anybody know me, that's not a racist bone in my body, but I want to, I want you to see something. If you walk down the street as a black person or a person of color, and there's a white person coming to you. And I know, especially here in the South, they expect you to move or they'll walk directly into you. So one day we was walking, my wife and I, right. And we was coming upon this gentleman. And I, and my wife moved. I said, don't you ever again move when you're walking? She said, but I, he was going to walk into me. I said, let him walk into you. I said, because of the PTSD that has been experienced by, by, by blacks through life and, and catch this now, we have automatically socially learned it that you're supposed to move because that's what our ancestors did. Now, you now, see, some people are not going to like this type of talking, but it's OK. I'm giving you some understanding of your learning from broken people, broken people who have had social experiences and they've taught it that baby move to the side. I grew up uh, a good friend of mine bought a house, uh, a little townhouse here in Atlanta. 
And he brought me over to visit. Great friend of mine. He's a, he's a white gentleman. And when I went upstairs, he says, Kerry, this house was made in the 1930s. He showed me the door that blacks were to come through that was separate from what the uh, everybody else could come through. And I was sitting there just looking all of time. Now, remind you guys, we talk in 1930, 40, 50s. It was only to the 70s that we started really seeing a difference. But were there any, was there any therapy to help African-Americans or any other society who has been traumatized by racism or traumatized by uh, slavery or traumatized by things that happened? Watching 12 Years a Slave and the, the 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 master calls for the man's wife to come sleep with him. And there was nothing he could do about it. So now he feels like he can't protect his own wife because to speak up, he will be hanging from a tree. PTSD. Fast forward to 2022. If you pay close attention to what is being taught to the generation today, the people that are teaching or influence our generations of young people. They're learning from broken people, broken through social learning, broken through, you know, crime or, you know, heat of passion. Some have been broken through watching their mom have to struggle to raise their household. So they develop this mentality through their learning, their social learning. So to become, you know, I don't like men, I hate men, or I hate women, or whatever it may have been. We learn as children from our parents. Anybody understanding what I'm saying? So was there any therapy as she stated for slaves when their husband was sold off or the son was sold off? Was there any therapy for the man when he had to watch his wife go and sleep, not wanting to, with the master being raped? having a child by her, about him, his wife, having to have a child by the master. So imagine this, all this PTSD, right? Joy Leary, Dr. Joy Leary put a book out titled PTSD, and it was, it was simply post-traumatic slave disorder that talked about all of the mental things that have passed down through generations, through generations, through generations, and we teach it to our children, and it's broken. We're teaching our children things from a broken mentality, from a broken spirit. I watch people say, and again, I'm going to just tackle on Will Smith real quick. He was defending his wife and he was doing what was necessary to, that's what, you know, me and you forgot that lost art of what it means to protect your woman. That's not what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We saw PTSD on full display, post-traumatic stress disorder coming strictly from his upbringing. Now, I want to go to this next clip from what Dr. Leary had to say, and I promise you it's going to blow your mind. Listen to this. But post-traumatic stress disorder, if in fact you are diagnosed with that, again, remember, direct or indirect trauma, here are some of the symptoms. A feeling of foreshortened future. Now, what does that mean? A feeling, well, you're not going to live long. How many of you are running into young people that don't believe they're going to make it past their 20s? Feeling of foreshortened future, exaggerated startle response, outbursts of anger, difficulty falling or staying asleep, hypervigilance, right? These are symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. This is like DSM stuff, Diagnostic Statistical Manual Mental Disorders. It's in there. And there's a whole listing of all these symptoms. Now, I want to roll it back. So you can understand what I what the transmission theory is, because I'm going to talk about transmission. So how does a person that's been traumatized by post traumatic literally has a diagnosis of post traumatic stress disorder? And can we, if we are logical and we are reasonable people, assume that a fair number of Africans had to have had post traumatic stress disorder? You think? I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about them. Untreated, though, right? Okay. So now let's do the math. Mom, who saw dad sold or sister raped has post-traumatic stress disorder. Still mom though, right? Only mom now has outbursts of anger, feeling of foreshortened future, difficulty falling or staying asleep, hypervigilance, that would be mom. Now Johnny or Mary or Shaquisha does not have, did not have the original trauma, but what are they learning? This is called social learning theory. What am I normalizing? Exaggerated startle response, 
outbursts of anger. Do, are you following me? So I didn't have to be traumatized. Now, the other thing is, do you think Johnny and Mary got traumatized too? Do you see? So what happens in your environment, you learn from the significant others in your environment. And if they're broken, guess what you're going to be? You're learning from broken people. And you're normalizing that behavior. And then it becomes, years later, 2008, that's their culture. That's just the way they are. That's their culture. Wow. Did you hear that? Guys, what, what, I do a lot of study. I do a lot of, uh, uh, I've been studying her for a while now. But did you hear that when someone, the mother, watches the father being sold, now she is having PTSD and she broke it down outbursts over exaggerating and uh, 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 hyper, uh, hyper, you know, just doing more than you should do going overboard or over the top. And she said, although the children did get, did, it wasn't them that was traumatized due to the learning or the social learning. Now the children are being taught or normalizing brokenness. They're normalizing PTSD. And what has happened is when you normalize something, it's now looked upon as that's just who they are. So what happens if broken people are teaching this stuff and it becomes now the norm? Then when we see the outburst that we saw this weekend, we call that the norm when it's really PTSD. Because if you read the book, you'll see where he was. He dealt with post-traumatic stress disorder from watching his father beat his mother up. What are you saying, Carrie? I'm saying we're learning as a society from broken people. And one of the reasons why we're pushing these videos and the courses is because that's no longer an excuse of being broken. It's time out for saying, oh, it's just the way it is, or that's just what I've been learning. No, no more excuses about this is the way I was taught. If you would say when you know to do better, do better. And post-traumatic stress disorder is something that is going on in black America. And it actually has passed down through slavery, through the racial stuff of, of civil, civil rights and all of that. And when it passes down and passes down, guess what happens when you don't correct something that is wrong, you normalize it. And when you normalize something, now people look at it first to say, well, that's just how we do it. You say something about my wife, I slap you. You say something about my mom, I jump on you because we have normalized that nobody's going to hurt my mama or hurt, hurt my fiance, my female again. What are you saying, Carrie? I'm saying that we got to stop learning from broken people we got to draw a line in the sand and say, listen, no longer can we make excuses for the way we act. We are charged to do better. Do you think that Denzel Washington would have got up? As a matter of fact, if you go back and watch the Oscars, when they made a statement about Denzel's son, he gave a certain look with his fingers like this. In other words, he laughed, but he moved on because... He didn't allow it to control him. See, when you have PTSD and you over exaggerate, when you overdo because you've learned from broken people, then when they, when you see somebody broken react this way and because of the social learning theory we just heard about, you turn around and you do what you saw. My mama slapped him, so I'm going to slap him. My mama cussed him out, so I'm going to cuss him out. That's how we get down in the G, the A. That's how we get down in the ATL. We do it like that. No, you're learning from broken people. And one of the reasons why we push the Authentically Me course or the works, you know, master class is because broken people need therapy. She said it clearly. She said how many people, when they were sold to slavery, got therapy? How many people of our grandfather's generations, right? That came through the civil rights. As a matter of fact, my daddy who came up in the civil rights era. How many times do you think he went to therapy for having to go to the color water fountain or had to go to a separate bathroom? I, I, I'll wait. I was born in 1968 at the end of silver of, of the civil rights and we were getting our rights. But there was a lot of things I was taught that you couldn't do. And guess what? Had I not learned, I would allow my social learning to tell me that blacks have their place over here, whites have their place over there. And as I grew for years, never had therapy. So if your grandfather never had that, let's, let's go back. 
Your great grandfather didn't have therapy. Your great, your grandfather didn't have therapy. Your father didn't have therapy, but they passed down what we call customs and beliefs. They have now been normalized in how you're supposed to conduct yourself based on the PTSD they had experienced in their time. I remember this story, uh, and I said so many times of the young boy who during Thanksgiving was in the kitchen and they watched her mother, uh, a young boy watched his mother cut half of the ham and throw it in the trash can. And so when he threw the ham in the trash can, the little boy said, mama, why did you throw that ham in the trash can? He, he was just puzzled because it was a perfectly good looking ham. As a matter of fact, she had just cut a piece of it and gave it to him, but she threw it in the trash can. And based on his social understanding or his, his social learning, something nasty and dirty goes in the trash can, right? So she said, son, well, I saw my mother do it. And so grandma was in the other room. And he runs in there and he says, grandma, I just saw mama throw half of the ham in the trash can. And she had just given me a piece and it's good, but I'm not understanding why she did that. And she told me that she did it because she watched you do it. Well, baby, I saw my mama do it. Now, God is so good. Big mama was still living and big mama was in there in the other room with her little quilt and she was knitting. And he went and said, big mama. She said, yeah, baby, big mama. Why, why, why did you throw half the ham in the trash can? I just saw mama do it. And mama said she did it because grandma did it. And grandma said she did it because she saw you do it. And she smiled and she pulled her glasses down on her nose and said, baby, the tr we, we didn't have a refrigerator big enough to put the ham in. It was going to get old and sour. So we cooked half and threw the other half away because we had no way to refrigerate it. What are you saying, Carrie? I'm saying a lot of what has been normalized, as the Bible says, we perish because of the lack of knowledge and broken people are teaching other people and they're doing it through their brokenness. So you're learning from broken people and you've normalized that it's OK to act a certain way. I don't know about you. I'm grateful that I had went to learn better than my mother and my father. Nothing was wrong with their time, but to whom much is given, much is required. They didn't have the ability to get on social media, get on the internet, have the encyclopedias and all of the information that is at our disposal. Anything in Oxford and all these great colleges of what you want to learn, anything you want to learn today is at your availability. And what do we do? We don't normalize it because we were never taught to look beyond that which we were told. Some people are not interested in learning. They're interested in being told what to do. And so you're learning from broken people. And one of the things that I'm trying to do, and we're trying to do here with the Abundant Life Nation, is to empower you to tap into the power that God has given you with knowledge and wisdom, right? Stop being broken, go to therapy. I will say it till I'm dead. We as black Americans need to go to therapy. And I can't speak for anybody else, but I think you need it too. But as part of the PTSD we have developed and experienced, I remember growing up in Winder and standing just a foot away from the Ku Klux Klan standing in their, in their hoods, marching down the streets. I saw that I witnessed that. I witnessed going into the mountains. And while we were on a spiritual retreat, going to a flea market and already feeling some kind of way. And while we were there looking down, looking down at this T-shirt that says the original boys in the hood. And it was a shirt of the Ku Klux Klan. And I looked up, the white man looked at me and said, yes, sir. And I got my black behind ghost. What are you saying, Kerry? When you learn that, that fear, then you got to unlearn it by saying, wait a minute, I am not going to be victim to the social learning of my ancestors. I'm not going to go and be broken. I'm going to do therapy so that my generation after me, my children and my children's children cannot continue through the fear and the foolishness and the pains and the hurts that I went through or my forefathers. In other words, you're responsible to change the trajectory of your next generation. therapy stop being you know broken and then we have a lot of people that are teaching from a broken place 
They're, they're, they're empowering. They're, 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 they're mentoring from a broken place. They haven't gone to do therapy. They haven't sat down and, and worked through their dark times. They haven't sat back and pulled the veil and said, I've gone through this and gone through that. No, what they've simply done was keep making excuses or just simply say, as, as Dr. Leary said, we normalize. That's just the way we are. Is anybody ready to change? Is anybody ready to change the trajectory of your life? And we just keep making excuses and pass on to the next generation our issues. I want my son and my grandson and my great grandsons to know that therapy is normal, just as normal as brushing your teeth. Therapy is something to work past and work you through all the things in life that you've gone through. Because everybody has some type of PTSD they've experienced, a post-traumatic stress disorder. Everybody. So guys, I hope this video has blessed you. I hope it's helped you. I want you to tap into, we have the work masterclass here. That is something that I, I really recommend that you get where you can really start doing the work on your life. As I talked about today, start dealing with the PTSD in your life. Stop normalizing craziness. Stop normalizing excuses. Stop normalizing that this is what God wanted. No, God says, be, be you holy as I'm holy. In other words, he said, I'm giving you the ability to be holy, a whole in your mind. People think holy is a lifestyle. No, holy is a, is you being where well, you were broken now becoming whole. What if H O L Y was W H O L L Y be ye holy, be made whole again. You do that through therapy, not through running around the church and shouting or paying your tithes and offerings or quoting the scripture. No, go see a doctor, go see a therapist, do the work, get a life coach, do something outside of the norm and stop normalizing craziness. I say craziness because that's really what it is. When we really look at it, we have been, through some stressful things in life, guys. But it's time out for excuses. And it's time to do the work. All right, guys. So I'm out of here. God bless you. Love you much. Leave me your comments. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.